I've always think that I never wanted to get involved with any cricketer. <laughs> no cricketers, please. No cricketers. <laughs> Full stop. Why don't you like cricketers? I used to. I'm not, not <laughs> yeah, anymore. You can't say this anymore. I can't say it anymore. But why <laughs> didn't you like cricketers? Because you know, I was I was like a 15 year old girl who's you know is traveling the world and try and training day in and day out and winning tournaments and I would never get the recognition. And yeah. you'd open the paper, then you'd only see cricket out there. Which is really strange because your mother was a cricket player. Exactly. Your dad played cricket exactly. in college. Now you're married to a cricket player. Exactly. So it's, you just can't it's escape karma. it. It's yeah. karma. So I'm really happy actually that we managed to grab you in Chennai because I know you're super busy. We actually wanted to come to Egypt, which would have been so much fun for us. <laughs> Maybe not for it you. Would have, it would have been actually been a, a little bit chaotic only because uh, we have league season right now. And I train like three times a day usually, but I try and sleep in the afternoons for about like two, three hours. So, so your schedule is why. pretty much jam packed over there. It is. I actually, when I go to Egypt, I try not to go out that much. Like I know that I'm going for three weeks. I know that I'm only going to be doing squash. The only day which actually I go step out is Friday, which is a weekend in Egypt. Mm. But other than that, it's just a club, hotel, club, hotel. Wow. That's it, yeah. But you have this very strong, long love affair with Egypt now, going back many, many years. Yeah. Does it feel like home now that you've been there so much? You know, from what Egypt was when I was 13 years old, when I shifted to what it is now, it's completely different. It was unsafe and, you know, it was... Uh, it was scary and also because I was 13 years old living in a, in a new country is uh, you know thing so I love Egypt right now only because I'm very very close to coach's family and uh, coach's wife takes care of me really really well and it feels like when I go back yes it feels like home but there's nothing uh, like coming back to Chennai and come back to your I'm, own bed I'm sure <laughs> I'm sure so you're 13 years old I mean that by any means is early to do anything let alone start a career as an athlete mm -hmm. and move to another country yeah on your own I actually to be honest at 13 also I didn't know what I wanted to do I didn't know if I actually wanted to become a professional squash player but uh, circumstances made me choose the sport and made me choose squash as a career only because the federation was very very nasty to me when I was a junior so I had no place to train in the country. I had to do stuff by myself. I was banned from going into the academy. Why no. were you banned from going into the academy? Only because I spoke my mind. Because they had dropped me from a team and I had gone to the press and I said that I deserve to be in the team. I was number two or number three in the country. I was 13 years old just wanting to play squash. The only option was to leave the country because no one really wanted to train me out here. And So uh, my mom said let's and Back this is because you were Bolivia. just outspoken and you wanted things a certain way and... Uh, yeah. Wow. You're obviously someone who, as an athlete, has nothing to hide, right? Mm -hmm. You spoke your mind, you fought for what you wanted and then you moved to Egypt. Actually, when they banned me, it, it made me uh, more think of the fact that I wanted to prove them wrong. I wanted to become the best in the country so that they, they could never leave me out from the team again. Mm -hmm. And, you know, uh, after two years, I was number one in the country already and five years are already number, uh, you know, top 20 in the world. So they couldn't touch me. Mm. They had to email me saying, can you come and please play for India? So wow. that, that's the position I wanted to be in mm. and that's what I trained for. So how did that process begin once you were in Egypt, you're 13 years old, how did all of that happen? You know, when I moved to Egypt, I was just so excited to be on the squash court again. I didn't mm. care. It didn't even come to me that, you know, I actually moved to Egypt. I think I only realized a year or two down, uh, the only thing where I realized, crap, I'm actually living out of a suitcase. I'm living in, in Egypt because we're three girls and I'm the youngest. So mm. I've always been spoiled. And suddenly I was doing stuff alone in Egypt. I had to try and save up, uh, you know, money for my next meal. Or I wanted to uh, buy Nike and Adidas clothes, but I didn't have the money. So I would actually take, I remember this, I would take all my mom's dupattas and stitch them into skirts. Because I remember going for like the French juniors and German juniors and everyone would be like, wow, your dress looks really nice. And I'd be like, yeah, I'm wearing my mom's dupatta stitch, <laughs> stitch into a skirt. To play in? Yeah. 
That's so crazy. So I had like a local tailor down the road, and like the first three things, it didn't it didn't come out right because obviously I couldn't lunch because of the material. So he made it a little loose for me, and then I said, okay, you know, I need tops as well. So I would mix match my mom's the patas. <laughs> so it's just it was all these memories obviously bring back you know a lot of things, but yeah. I feel like everything happened. Uh, everything was a blessing in disguise as well because I feel like if I'd not made that move to Egypt, I wouldn't be. Uh, as good as a squash player I am today mm -hmm. because those five years which I was in Egypt made me like a completely different player. Being a female athlete in India, what has that experience been like? It's hard. Mm. You have to fight for every single thing but uh, athletes like Saina and Sindhu and Mary Com and Sanya before they're all doing so so well and now like people are actually sitting up and being like you know these girls can do well as well of course. so it feels nice to be in that era of all the women doing very well in in sport but it's just an added responsibility for us and I think we've really enjoyed the responsibility do you think the fight has gotten easier as you've gone on do you think that it see I've always believed that you have to let your racket do the talking. Mm. Like you can you can say whatever you want, but until you perform, only then you will have a voice to speak. When I actually decided to stop playing the nationals. This was after 2011. Yes, because I think the prize money was about 20 to th uh, 30,000 rupees for the g women. And it was one and a half lakhs or two lakhs for the men. And it was just bizarre because I've known Saurav who's number one in the men's. He's actually my brother-in-law, he's married to my sister. Yeah, well, I was going to come so, to that. When I was in England, I used to stay with him and I would go for training with him. I would do the exact same thing. So I'm just sitting there going like, why should the men get one and a half to two lakhs for the same effort I put in every day as well? Mm -hmm. And it's not about the money. It's, it's, it's just principle. about the respect mm -hmm. and I and th that's when I decided I'm not going to play the nationals but then obviously I started winning I won the you know the medal at the Commonwealth Games and blah 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 and that's when people were like okay you know what she's serious about this you know we yeah. have to do something so I feel like you can put people down you can fight with the federation you can make your point clear but until you have your rack let your racket do the talking nothing will happen so and, and not only is that I mean that's a small step for you, that's a huge yeah. step for women in sport. For all the girls that follow, that want to do anything sport related in this country, that is huge. So congratulations. Honestly, it's amazing. I'm getting goosebumps just talking about it. So then fast forward to now you're married to a cricket player, biggest sport in the country. What was that adjustment like? And did you see the differences straight away? Oh, yeah. I think the first tournament I actually travelled with Dinesh was for the IPL. So it was just like, come this, on, this, this is not fair. Yeah. But uh, it's hard to know that, you know, there's this sport where there's so much money being pumped into it. But it's actually how every sport should be. Mm. You want your athletes to only concentrate on actually winning medals for the country and training. Not booking your ticket, booking your hotel, booking a taxi, you know. So I'm going to China now, no one knows uh, English out there. So I'm figuring out how am I going to uh, write it down in Chinese and take it to the taxi driver. Wow. And then I'm like, okay, you know what, this hotel is way too expensive. So I'm going to stay in a different hotel. But how am I going to get from, from this hotel to the squash court? So there's so many things that I have to do before a tournament. And then you travel with DK for the IPL and it's just like yeah, smooth like, sailing oh, just in and out. Get on the flight, straight to the hotel. Yeah. You know? So he came to Malaysia for one of the tournaments and he's like, oh, will there be a bus to pick us up? I was like, no. <laughs> he was like, will there be like people from the tournament coming to help us with bags? I was like, Dinesh, just pick up your own bag from the bed and let's <laughs> go out. And wow. he was like, but you know where you're staying? I was like, yeah, I booked the hotel myself. <gasps> and he was like, okay. That must have been her. such an eye opener. Yeah, he's like, you know, I'm sure what was going on in his head that, you know, my wife already has the pressure of performing at this tournament, but she has to do all this before actually getting on court and playing her match. Mm. So I think, not just squash, I think with every sport, I think he appreciates. Obviously, and, know, and to watch there. his wife going through it, that's an yeah. immense amount of respect. Yeah. You know, because I think at the end of the day, DK still plays on a team, right? Yeah. Apart from when you're a playing doubles. sport is very, very, yeah. very different. When he sees you, doing all of this he must feel so incredibly proud like literally she's 
just killing it. I hope it. he is, I hope he is, yes. You know, when I spoke to Aisha Dhavan, mm. she obviously lives in Australia, yeah. mm. Shikhar lives in India, mm. and they only really see each other when they're on tour. On tour, yeah. Right? I mean, you're constantly training, mm. he's constantly traveling. How do you deal with that mentally as husband and wife? Like so this year is, is huge for me because we had Commonwealth Games and Asian Games. So, and it's about three to four months apart. So since last September, I've been like on the road, he's been on the road. So we had decided that Till the uh, Commonwealth Games, I was just going to do my own thing and he was going to do his own thing. Mm. And then during IPL anyways, I was going to meet him. So after the Commonwealth Games, it must have been like six months since I had met him, six to seven months. And he said, okay, so when you're coming, just take a flight and come. Come, I haven't seen you in, in, in about a, a few months. And I said, Dinesh, I just want to be home. Just give me one week where I just want to Leave sleep me on my own bed. <laughs> I cannot think of getting on another flight. and. And he understood it. Yeah. And I think that's what... Yeah, because that's your time off and then you're again traveling yeah, with so him. Yeah, basically during IPL, I try and take a month off just to be with Dinesh because IPL is very, very stressful because you're on the road all the time, you're playing matches. But I told him like, I just need one, need I just need one week of alone time, me time back home. And then, and that's when I started traveling with him after that. No, oh, I understand it, but it must be insane. So... Let's get down to the romance and how this all... I love DK, I'm a huge fan, I always have been because he's just full of energy, he's such he a, a great guy. Yeah. How did this romance blossom? My family, especially my mom has known D uh, Dinesh and his family because my mom uh, runs a travel agency on her own. Mm. So on and off Dinesh and uh, Dinesh's mom used to call up my mom to book tickets and stuff. So I'd al always known of him, I've known who he was and stuff like that. So then he had messaged me randomly and he had said, oh, let's just catch catch up for dinner. And I was like, oh God, okay. Did you know fine. it was a date? No, I didn't. Like there was no so hi. The, like Dinesh is just to the point. Like, there was yeah. no hi. Like, let's go for dinner. I'm like, excuse me, who are you? Like, first say hi. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, no, I'm actually traveling, blah, blah, blah. So like, you know, five times or six times, I've, he's done that to me and I've always said something that, you know, I'm not here, I'm at the gym or I'm, I'm traveling and blah, blah. So again, he messaged and he said, okay, let's catch up when you're in Chennai. I said, oh, I'm actually in Chennai only for a day and I'm leaving tomorrow to Australia. So, you know, I won't be able to come. Maybe, you know, maybe when I come back. So these are the excuses I gave him. So we train at the same gym in Chennai and I'd never actually seen the nation the gym ever because I used to go at six o'clock in the morning. So uh, the next day I was at the gym at six o'clock in the morning and I walk in and I see Dinesh there last oh, night. No. Oh my god. <laughs> he had already come to see me there that morning. <laughs> because there's no way Dinesh Kata is going to do gym at 6 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> and uh, he's like, oh, so what happened to your flight? I was like, oh, I just cancelled my trip. I felt sick. I, I said some, some stupid reason. Which he didn't believe. Which obviously he didn't believe. And two of his other friends are like looking from that room going, like, oh my god, this girl is just not... She's not into she's, you. She's, Move on. Yeah. Yeah. So I felt so bad that day that he had messaged me and he had said, uh, uh, so are you getting on the next flight again to Australia? And I was like, oh, God, I, have, I have to go out with him now. Like, it doesn't matter. Just go, go out once and then like, just get You're it done. Done with it, yeah. So I was like, oh, you know, tomorrow I'm training the whole day. But the only time I have to meet you is like at 7 a.m. after my gym. So and because I was, you thought he would say no. Like, yeah, he's definitely <laughs> going to say no. He said, okay, I'll be there. <gasps> Like, DK, oh nicely done. I was like, done. are you sure at 7 a.m.? He's like, yeah, yeah, I'll be there, don't worry. So I'd finished gym and my gym clothes, I'm sweating. I was like, least bothered. I was like, anyways, this is going to be one date and it's done. So I got into his car after She says the gym. now three years later. <laughs> <laughs> and then we go for breakfast and then like we spoke for like four hours. Like it just went Wait a like second, that. you told him you only had an hour free. Exactly. <laughs> so then I, he's like, oh, don't you have to go for training? I'm like... Oh, what's the time? Like it was just like it just the time just passed, and then I was actually I was actually leaving to England in two days. And then wow, he so he said, really won you over in that first. He knew he only had that one shot. So I had one more date with him the same day. We went out. That we same spoke day again. after four yeah, hours because I was leaving the next day to England. Right. And then I was like, okay, done. Like my quota is done with him. I don't need to meet him ever again. 
So I go to England and then he lands up there to spend time with me. And I'm like, oh God, this guy is going to follow me. He just ever. jumped on a plane to come yeah. and see you? Yeah. After two dates on the same day? Yeah. So, so you... the first two days, I just like completely did my own routine to show him that, no, I don't have time for you. <laughs> yeah. And then we actually got back home. He was in the same flight as me. We got back home and we missed our flight in Dubai. So we got an extra day to spend together and we had nothing to do. So again, we spent that whole day talking and, you know, just spending time. And that's when I said, okay, maybe so I should... So boom, three days later, you're in love with DK. Give him, give him a chance. Wow. Yeah. And it was obviously getting serious. So I had to tell my mom. Which she had no idea? She had no idea. Oh. So Dinesh asked me, when are you going to tell my mom? I said, okay, I'll tell her now. She's like, what do you mean? So I messaged her. He's like, what is this family? You're messaging something like this to your mother. Like, how can you tell her something like this? Thing with my mom is that uh, I tell her everything. But because I've always stayed in different countries, we have this thing of messaging each other everything. Like, even if she's in this room and I'm in that room, we're messaging each other. So I messaged my mom and I said, Ma, I need to tell you something. And she's like, oh, what? And I was like, I want to be with Dinesh and I really like him. And she's like, oh my God, I need time to digest this. <laughs> so that was like her first Because night. she knew how you felt about exactly. cricket. Exactly. So like in a day or two, my mom messages me saying, I want to meet Dinesh. And I was like, oh, with or without me? She's like, without. I was like, okay, oh, this, no. this is not going to go down well. <laughs> so I'm chilling in Dinesh's house and they, they meet for lunch. And I'm like prepping him. I'm saying, Dinesh, don't say this. Say this. Please call her auntie. Please call that. Like, I'm prepping him. Yeah. And then they go and meet and then my mom comes and says, okay, fine, as long as you're happy. And then how soon after that did he propose? So we got engaged. You got engaged pretty quickly after that. Eight to nine months down our relationship. And then we got married in three years. So three years you've been together now. So we've been together for six years now. Make your debut. Okay, love you. What is your favorite performance to date of DK's? See, I hardly watch, but the one thing I've actually watched a few times the match in Sri Lanka where he won the last the last over or the last ten balls or whatever he hit those runs. What did he score? Like just, 28 like 28 runs or, of nine or balls. nine balls or yeah. something like that. I had just come back from Egypt after two and a half months of training and I was going to see him the next morning because he was coming back and I'd completely forgotten that the finals were going on. So then I'm having dinner with my sisters and then all our phones started buzzing at the same time and then everyone's like, no, switch on the TV and that's when we saw the whole thing, so... That must be I'm such so a crazy feeling for you though. I didn't watch it live. It's like I would have walked out of the stadium. Is it easier when you watch it on TV? No, it's the same feeling. No, actually it is easier watching it on TV. Because there's not a camera in your face. And I'm Waiting for actually, Deepika's I, the reaction. Camera, actually, the cameraman don't know who I am and where I am, which is really nice. That's why I actually go and watch some of the IPL matches. Well, they will after this. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I prefer watching it on TV because, I don't know, I just you guess it's easier. You can I don't know, yeah. yeah. Well, since we know you're such a big cricket fan, Let's see how much you know about so, cricket. Dinesh, cricket. It's, it's Dinesh and cricket. You're going to be a failing yeah. wife after this. So, <laughs> <laughs> okay, so do you remember what day of the week it was on your wedding day, August 18th and August 20th, 2015? Two weddings, you had a Christian wedding and a Hindu yeah. wedding. Um, I know it was the middle of the week because all our friends had to take a whole week. So I think Tuesday, Thursday, just stop right there. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I thought you were going to give me one more day and just no. ruin it. I was like, stop, stop, stop. We got it. Okay. What is the name of the TV reality show that Dinesh Karthik participated oh, in? Oh, yeah. Um, it was a dance show, mm -hmm. which I really want to remove that, uh, <laughs> that video off YouTube. It's just like, imagine if you have kids and they watch their father dancing like that. Oh, what was the show called? Do you remember? Something Kiladi. It's good enough. You knew that it was a dance show. Yeah. Ek khiladi, ek yes. In your teenage years, you were in Egypt. Where did DK spend some of his teenage years outside of India? Kuwait. 
She's getting all these right. These are way too easy. <laughs> okay, which current Chennai Super King player was DK's captain in the Under-19 World Cup of 2004? Raidu. Are you serious? Yes. I, know, I, know I was just about to look at the camera and go, come on, we actually think she's going to know this. She's not going to know this. Raidu. There was Uttapa, Raidu, Dinesh, and someone else in the team. Stop the press, everyone. No Zipika and her Zipika. knowledge on cricket. I love cooking. Little secret, the, the most expensive room in this house is my kitchen. One more. Small, small, small. So 2014, mm -hmm. you remember that one? Commonwealth Games. Yes! 2014, <laughs> 2018 and 2022, these are like the three years. I'm like, Denise, these three years are very important for me. Just remember, that. that's all you have to remember. Yeah, 2014 <laughs> is very important for our director as well because okay. <laughs> since the time that we've been planning to talk to you, I mean, for him, you and Joshna during this final, I mean, it's embedded in his brain when the two of you won and what a beautiful moment it was. Do you think that it was your best performance? Yes, I think to be honest, we were so nervous that we told each other, it doesn't matter, let's just put ourselves back um, where we train. And when you see in the finals itself, both of us were just going through the whole routine. And they said championship ball or Commonwealth Games gold medal. Both of us just smiled at each other. And, wow. I, and I remember that moment and she smiled back. Yeah. I can't believe actually that it's already been four years and we've already played another Commonwealth game. Mm. It feels so um, vivid in my in my memory because it just feels like we just won the gold. Like I remember the finals, the final morning of the Commonwealth Games this year. I was in both the finals, the mixed and the women's this year. So me and Joshna were sharing a room and I, I, woke, up, I woke up and I said, Josh, I feel like I'm back in Glasgow. Mm. I feel like, and it was just like deja vu because it was the same routine we did. We caught up, we went for breakfast, we came back, we spoke about what we had to do. And then we went for our finals. So it was just like, it felt so real and it felt so awkward and weird that it, four years had already gone by. And both of us are standing here at another finals four years after the you know mm -hmm. the epic goal. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching Miss Field. We've got plenty more episodes coming your way with a kick-ass lineup of women. So hit subscribe so that you don't miss a thing.